<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Radio Works World with Dr. Cheryl Chapman, that's me, and the lovely Lisa King. Hi. <laughs> No. So please, Elisa, please introduce yourself to the lovely audience. Okay. Um, my name's Lisa King. I'm 46 and I live in southwest London, not far from Heathrow, Twickenham Way. And I've been in the health and fitness industry for many years. Mainly it started off working with mental health patients and referred patients helping them to get back to full fitness, et cetera. And um, I currently do a lot of group PT work, helping people to get fit, but I've gone into a lot of personal development as well now. So I'm really incorporating that into what I do and just helping people to get fit in every respect and improve their health. Brilliant. Yeah. Today cool. is all about your story and to be able to change your story share your story, which is course, what we're doing now, and inspire others. I invite anybody who's joining us live now to just chat in if you've got any questions for Lisa. Um, so let's have a bit of fun to begin with. So, Lisa, what was your story as a child, and who was your favourite character? That's the question I want to ask you. Okay. I liked Roald Dahl as a, as a child. I read several, several different books, um, Fantastic Mr. Fox, James and the Giant Peach. Um, I had a bit of a mad imagination as a, as a child, which was almost great. But my favourite was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, oh. Really big fan. And I think, I think um, probably Charlie, in a way, was my favourite, purely because I'm a really big supporter of people who sort of battle through things and... You know, even then, it was, I was always loving to support the underdog. I'm a big yeah. football fan, and um, being a West Ham supporter, you get used to being the underdog. <laughs> so there's all the West Ham fans out there. Um, so, yeah. Then, so, then, yeah, is West Ham called the Hammers or the Hammered? Yeah, both. <laughs> <laughs> and the weekend, it'll be Hammered because we're playing Man U, so we're going to get absolutely cramped. But, um, yeah, so I, I think I really related to just the, the madness in the story, but then the the way he sort of just remains who he was, but just become a winner. Yeah. yeah. And that's interesting, isn't it? Because if I was to say to you, you know, so what's your story? You know, what, what happened at the beginning? Talk about, so what's your story? It's really, you know, what kind of problems did you have that, that got you started in what you're doing now? So is there a relation between, you know, maybe that, I mean, it's a fantasy world, but, you know, this world of, like, trying to help other people and, you know, trying to help the underdog. Is there a theme that kind of runs through your life there, Lisa? What, what's what's the story at the beginning of your story, if you like? I think so. I mean, I've always been wanting to help people who sort of have always had a little bit of a harder start. I think mental it's what dragged me into mental health. And I set up a football team for mental health users, um, which is still going. That's been going now 11 years and it's chartered standards. So it's really pushing people. And also I tend to, I like being around winners, but I also mm -hmm. like being around people who I know can be a winner. They just don't believe it yet. So I just sort of try and guide them to sort of go, this is what you can do. And I think that's been a part of my life quite massively. Um, mm. Being a motivator has always been huge for me. I've, it's always something that I find very natural um, and I can see the brilliance in people. And my sort of world was rocked um, back in 2010. Mm -hmm. So I was still in the industry and I, had, I was still involved in exactly the similar things, lots of different types of people that I was working with. And my partner at the time, Becky, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer. It was a huge tumour, so big that they had to give her really intense chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And basically a year later, 11 months later, um, we sit, sat down and had a very honest conversation. She'd been in remission. She'd done really well. And we had a very honest conversation. And she asked me if I was still in love with her. And I couldn't hand on my heart at that point with where I was mentally. 
with, with everything that we've been through. I couldn't say that I was, so I couldn't lie to her. And yeah. the following morning, she committed suicide. So, wow. yeah, it, so my world has gone from being somebody who could really motivate people to just not even being able to motivate myself. I, I, I just, I was in just a complete sort of haze with everything. I just couldn't cope. Um, and then over the course of the next year, I, I became the uh, queen of distraction. I, I didn't just have a degree in distraction. I, I'd managed to get a PhD in it, which was quite impressive. Uh. <laughs> yeah, quite impressive. So I, I was sort of out, totally in denial as that my health was suffering. I was overworking, just throwing myself into work because I just didn't want to be at home. I didn't want to be sat where I could start thinking. So I overworked. I just totally distracted myself. I was drinking too much. I was doing things with people I sh really shouldn't be with. I was still running two businesses. So mm -hmm. still fine, still fine. This all, all the distraction stuff really happened from the from the drinking and the and the madness at weekends, yeah. and it it was mad. It, it really was tough. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because when you look back on that situation now, Lisa, and you, and obviously you're using the word distraction now, looking back and saying, ah, I realised what I was doing. But at the time, I guess that you know you were just doing what what you were doing, really. Um, but do you do you know what kind of um. What kind of message do you think there was at the time? Was it because you were trying to just distract from feeling the emotion of the shock and the loss of Becky? You know, was that the, what, what, what do you think, looking back, you were trying to distract from? I think now, I mean, I, I definitely was distracting from stopping. I think stopping meant, I would think, and it would bring on the sadness. and Because we'd been friends 16 years. We, we'd been partners five years. We were really yeah. close. We were best friends. Um, and I think I missed her, and I, I think if I stopped, I would realise exactly how much. So I was trying to distract myself from feeling what I knew was underneath, yeah. and I didn't want it to come out because I didn't. I was just coping at that point, and I didn't think I could cope with what emotions I knew were under there. Yeah, and and it is interesting, isn't it? Because you know, if you stay busy, 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 like you said, you don't stop. You don't have to think about what's happening in the moment. You can just distract. Um, and I know so many people, and and ask me how I know about this as well. Of course, busy, busy, busy. <laughs> I am still busy. I do have the moments where bring other people in. And um, so we were talking just off off. We were talking in the green room. That sounds fab, doesn't it? Yeah. We talk Looking at the lovely Mary, like freaking awesome she is, and she's just one of those people that just goes. So, what would happen if you stopped? And, and like, I don't know if you're like me. I go, oh, I haven't got a clue. I mean, I've never stopped, you know, or something like that. And then someone only has to ask this question, and you go, um, oh, hang on, right, I've got to stop a minute to ask about that question. Now, what comes up? Uh, and yeah. it's only in that moment of of stopping, you know, that you realise, ah, yeah, actually, there is. I'm definitely distracting from that. I mean, I used to just say I'm distracting from life. I mean, is that kind of, you know, where where you feel you you might have been before, distracting from life? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I just didn't want to look at anything else. I I really wasn't interested in anything other than just getting through each day at that point, day by day. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, I don't know if anybody's watching. Um, Everyone's watching on the uh, recording. You know, what sort of things have you distracted from? Because you know, it's, it, I think one of the things that we find is that we think we're the only people that feel like a particular way. Um, and actually, throughout the work, you know, that I've done with people on their stories and just helping people with their therapy, it's just kind of like honestly, we are just so not on our own in this situation. But we just, I don't know, don't know whether or not we feel like we need to be strong and tough or I don't know what that is. Um, but actually, there's a lot of people that feel exactly the same, uh, you know, as we do at some stage. So thank you for sharing that with us. So what was it that, uh, you know, how did you make a change in your life then? So obviously, this was happening to you. It was all, you know, sound terrible and can fully understand why you might not want to feel those emotions at that time. So so what happened? What happened? Um, to make a change in your life? 
about two years, two and a half years after uh, Becky had died, I, you'd see me sat in my doctor's surgery. And basically I had visited him because I constant, I was constantly getting chest infections and being really unwell. Um, and if I knew what I knew now, I would know exactly what it is. Thanks to Marion. But basically um, the chest infections were just a sign that my body was basically just stopping. You know, it, I was getting poorly and lots of viruses and things like that. So I went to the doctor and the doctor, I'd known the doctor many years, very rarely went. And he just sat there and just said to me, if you don't stop, you're going to have a stroke or a breakdown. He said, wow. yeah. So I saw and how, the first, how old were you, Lisa, at this stage? Uh, I would have been, uh, this was four years ago, 42. Yeah, so young. And a fit and healthy 42 year old, even despite, yeah. you know, what I was putting my body through prior to that, you know, my body took a massive pounding um, yeah. because of it in every respect. Um, so basically he sat there and he just said, you've got to put yourself first. You've got to talk to people. That was something that, you know, I, I was very, I'm, I've always been the strong one. That was always my thing. So I would always be, oh, it's fine, it's okay, yes, you know, I'm, I'm upset, but I wouldn't dig deeper. It was, it was like um, a vulnerability thing. Yeah. For me. And, and I, because I'd always been strong, being vulnerable was hard. Mm -hmm. And opening up meant I was vulnerable. So I just basically um, started to talk to people, started to talk to my partner then, Penny, who walked into a whole new world when she met me, bless her. Um, and basically, yeah, so, so I just started talking. I actually had a really interesting conversation. One of the things that really helped me, I worked in mental health. And when you're a worker, you can't divulge your personal circumstances. And I was sat, I can't tell you his name, but let's just say Jay. I'm sat talking to Jay in, um, in a mental health unit in the gym, which is where I would go and work and help people feel better. And he sat down and I, I just sat down next to him and he just broke down. And I, I said, what's going on? And he said, I just want to kill myself. So this immediately hit a nerve with me straight away. And he basically turned around and told me that he had a conversation with his daughter the day before and he didn't say, I love you, which was something that they always said. Yeah. basically she killed herself the next day and he'd lived with that for a year mm. so basically I just broke the rules at this point which I'm quite good at doing and I just just basically told him my story because I knew he needed me to understand what he was going through I couldn't just be a worker there I had to actually let him know so I gave him my phone number and told him my story, and I said, I totally get it. And he rung me, uh, texted me, he didn't ring me, three months later, and he basically texted me to say, you saved my life that day. So that was wow. huge. That's yeah, that was huge for me, because it showed that by me opening up to what I'd been through, could, can actually change other people's lives. So that was brilliant. Really, yeah. That was really that was like a big light bulb moment for you where you were like, whoa, hang on. If I don't actually be the strong one, I mean, you're still obviously being there caring and supporting, um, mm. but it's just like, look, let, look, let me just show you that my life's been a bit shit as well. Not, not, for, the, not for the woe is me, but yeah. just I understand your pain. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it was yeah. the thing about being vulnerable as well because, yeah. you know, I've always been a bit of a protector from being a kid and uh, so for me to let go of all that was huge you know and it was very emotional and I sort of walked away I didn't let him see me crying but I but it wasn't a sad thing I knew that I'd changed something in that moment for both of us so yeah, brilliant it was huge yeah um, yeah it's almost like dare I say you found the golden ticket yeah absolutely yeah absolutely and it's something there's lots of different, we all go through so many different things. And that was, I sort of have, have had different things happen. 
And I, you know, I know that I can, by being honest about what's happened to me in lots of different things, I can, I can really help people in respect of understanding what they're going through and. Yeah. I, think, I don't know if you get the same same as me. You know, sometimes people see me. You know, they see me on stage. They, you know, they see you. You're all together. You're confident. You know, you can walk in the room. You know, like you know, you can. I mean, in the nicest possible way. You know, attention. You know, you're just kind of there, aren't you? Um, and 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 some people don't necessarily think that there is that side to you. You know, because yeah. they think, oh, you're just sorted. Well, you know, yeah, you know, I have shit days as well as I have in brilliant days. Um, yeah. But also. The, different sides to you i mean i can see already you've got two friends behind you there you i've yeah. got four. oh no really yeah. my m and m yeah like there's this quirky side to you you know and, and i think people just kind of some people will label people you know I mean, your mental health that must be very serious you know what i mean and then it's like no i've got a fun side as well yeah. and you know oh you must be very strong well actually no i've got a sensitive side as well and you know i, I do we all bleed <laughs> that's pretty much it isn't it you know, we all bleed we're all the same so uh, it's cool Brilliant. So oh, thanks for sharing that, Lisa. And I'm glad that you had that moment because it's in moments like that that you suddenly realise, you know, kind of like why you're here, what your purpose is in life, really, which is just yeah, right. So in terms of where you are now, um, you know, where are you now? What's the story now? What's the story? I could say morning glory. That sounds so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Difficult, cool, chill, trying to be all professional and look what happens. It comes back to say every time. Anyway. Where are you now, lovely? And what's happening? What's what's happening in your fantastic world now? Because I did say to some people, you're hoping to take people higher. Little bit of a hint there. Absolutely. Um, I I like to get people to challenge themselves, and that's something that I've always done in respect of the capabilities and just reaching higher than what they can go. So I still do my charity boot camps. So I do a couple of charity mountain climbs. And then somebody said to me, why don't you actually take people up mountains and do some workshops and, and just really make it an event? So I sat down and, and I've thought about this, but the, the sort of old fears came up for me. And um, but now I'm like, I, I've got this. I'm, I'm all over this. So yes. what I do now is take people up mountains and that can be. There's easier ways up mountains, there's harder ways up mountains. So anyone can climb a mountain. Mm -hmm. There are lots of different ways up mountains. And it's just to show people that you can reach whatever heights you want to go to. It doesn't matter where you start from. You've just mm -hmm. got to take that first step and, and just build towards where you want to go. You know, I took a charity group up Snowdon uh, two years ago and had a woman there and there are reasons I can't divulge in names, but basically she was in my group and she had suffered massive domestic violence, huge physical and mental scars. And I had done a climb and I said, right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take, take you up a mountain. Um, I, we're on air, so I won't say exactly what she said. But she basically... Yeah, she was, yeah, was very colourful. And um, basically that was we went up in the May... And we're at the top, and it was a really tough climb for her. There was 15 of us, did it for a local charity. And at the top, she turned around to me and she said, if you ever ask me again to do that, you can more colourful words. <laughs> and, she's actually, <laughs> and she's actually signing up to do my next climb. So she's doing it again with me, which oh, is so brilliant. Nice. But um, brilliant. it's just, yeah, it's, it's all about, it's called Step Up Stand Tall. It's a new brand that's going to be starting in the next few weeks. And yeah. I'm going to be running a, a free 21-day challenge. So there's some funky mm. videos every day. and the just challenge. Yeah. Yeah. So I will be – I'll give you an example of one of them just so that it gives you a bit of a, an idea. So I'm literally in a Virginia Lakes having a walk, beautiful, beautiful park, and it's tipping down with rain. And – I'm walking along a path, I'm on my phone, and I literally just go off piste into the woods, just walking. And, and the challenge for that day is you don't have to follow everyone else's path. You can make your own path. And, and I just went off into the woods. So it's, it's all about real life things that mm -hmm. I've sort of experienced and other people experience and just trying to remind people that 
you know, you can go your own way with things. You can do lots of different things. And it's just fun. But it's mm. also really a reality check for people to realise that I can actually do anything. I've just got to believe that I can do it. So, yeah. yeah. I like it. I like the concept. Yeah. Like, I don't like the hard work climbing up the mountain. That's just me personally. But I'm probably the sort of person who really needs to join you because of that, you see. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Interesting, isn't it? Like, I'm not a certain areas, but then when it comes to physical, I'm like, oh, I don't know about that. But <laughs> it sounds fabulous. Sounds fabulous. And definitely sounds like a chance. Sounds like something like Mr. C would be definitely interested in. Yeah. Um, now he's had his sixth with the blood clot removed. Do you know what I mean? Um, that's, that's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I can imagine. I mean, I've heard a lot of, you know, like I, I did go to the Lake District once and I climbed up a little mound. <laughs> and, and that was really fascinating. So, um, yeah, I imagine when you get to the top of there, it's kind of like you've just overcome like a lot of things, haven't you? I, I prefer that to maybe, you know, walking on fire, have yeah. the mountain choice. Yeah, I've walked on fire. Yeah. But yeah. it's don't fancy. It's more of a I think also what it symbolizes as mm. well is huge. We've got another one you mentioned the Lake District. We're doing a charity walk up scaffold pike, which is oh. Yeah, we're, we're doing that. Yeah, and we're yeah. doing the longest route, which is going to be interesting. So that's in about four, uh, five weeks. All right, great, cool. So maybe if you could post on the on the on the in the comments at the end of this um of this uh, our, our chat of, of your show, if you could just pop in there in contact with you about that. That sounds great because actually the weather, in theory, would be you know, like you know boiling. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I do like about the scaffold, actually. Yeah, that, that's just taking me back in my mind to another story, but that'll be for another. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so in terms of, I mean, I always have my lovely guests if they've got a quote. So, have you got a quote that you can share with our listeners and our, and our viewers that's kind of got you through life or that symbolizes Lisa King? Yeah, I. Um, I've got to pronounce this right. It's by a Chinese gentleman called Lao Chai. Yes. And it's a journey of a thousand miles always starts with a first step. Brilliant, yes. What that symbolises to me is that I think I, ha I talked to somebody about this yesterday, actually. When I was at my point where I think things were really not good, getting better seemed so far ahead. And I became quite overwhelmed and just, and you know, even, I'm, I'm a multitasker. I've always been able to do lots of different things. What was going on? And I couldn't cope with it. And I saw this quote and it reminded me that just small steps every day just become something so much bigger. And I mentioned this actually, you talking about this quote, I mentioned this to somebody yesterday who was in a similar situation, who was in a severe burnout. And I told her about this and got her to do some little steps. So I'm waiting now till next week to see that, how that quote has helped her. Yeah. So, yeah, I find it really quite powerful. Yeah, it is. And, and it is, you know, it's anything in life. At the end of the day, just take the first step that you've had many instances like this like i have you know like our, our listeners and our viewers you know you start a journey you have no idea where it's going no idea where it's going really and you can have a plan and you, you know all those things that are great but actually somewhere along the line you might go down that different path that you talked about before you might decide to go a different way from everybody else you might decide to follow people you know who knows but ultimately i'm, I'm a firm believer in that you you end up where you should be yeah uh, yeah I don't necessarily think that life is predetermined, but I do think that you end up where you sh where you should be for you right then in that right moment. Yeah, um, I think that's a great a great quote. Thank you for sharing. And so this has been brilliant. Yeah, and thank you for inspiring others. Um, and as I said, you know, how can the audience get in touch with you? That's what people would want to know to find out about your charity works. We didn't talk really too much about the charity. Do you have a chosen charity that you work with, or does that change? We're at the moment working with Shooting Star Chase, and they are a local um, children's hospice for children with life limiting illnesses. Yes. So it's in a beautiful place. There's one very local to us, and we've done a lot of work for them this year, and we'll probably continue 
because it is so local and it's children, I think, you know, kids, they, that we're just trying to give them the best life that they can have and experiences and things like that and to help yeah. them with respite and different things. So, yeah, so it's really good. Yeah. Charity. And so um, how can people get into contact with you? Do you have a, I know you said your website, I think you said was being built, but how can they get in contact with you if they want to find out more? And so? The best way to do it is to get in contact via Lisa King training at gmail.com. And that's my email address and get in touch with me, give her your name. And as soon as the launch of the challenges starts, I'll add you to the group. Perfect. So Lisa King training at gmail.com. That's it. Yep. Let me just pop that up so people can see that. And anything else that you would like to share with anybody who's listening or watching us in terms of your story and just anything that you'd like to share with them while I just put your contact I think the, details. The biggest thing is no matter how bad things are, you, you can get through it. Just don't look too far ahead and just take each day at a time. And, mm -hmm. you know, each day, it doesn't mean each day will get better, but each day you will get stronger for different yeah. things. Life is life and things come up and curveballs come up, but, but you will get through it. Yeah. I've got a little saying that I'm looking at now. It says, don't take life seriously. Nobody gets out alive anyway. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good stuff. Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for being open. Thank you for caring. And thank you for being here. Thank you for joining brilliant. us. I'll see you soon. And thank you very much wherever you are in the world. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and goodbye from Dr. Charles Channel at Radio Works World. See you later. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.